G'day YouTubers, Ride Your Coffee Coach here from Australia. Tell me, what did I do wrong in that video? Today, I'm gonna show you the four most important cleaning techniques to maintain a really healthy and tasty coffee espresso machine. So let's get into it. Number one is after every shot, you need to clean the surface level of the machine back to the stainless steel. Obviously, your best tool is your cloth. Give everything a wipe down. And the other super important thing that I think a lot of people forget, especially on machines like this, where it's not easy to run water, you have to flush the group head. All the little bits of coffee grinds after that one shot stick to the top of the dispersion screen and then if you're making another shot that's going to drop into your water and it's going to make it taste pretty ordinary so every shot flush your group head and give it a little wipe get rid of all of that dirty grind the next one you should do after every day and this is for home users so if you're in a commercial setting obviously this is a lot more often but let's say you make four coffees a day you want to take apart your portafilter basket just clip it out either with a teaspoon sometimes it gets easier uh, the more you do it this is obviously quite tight a lot of people I think forget this because it's a little bit difficult to do but you can see how grimy it gets in there this needs to be cleaned out after you've made your coffees of the day and wipe down the back of this get in underneath all of these areas it's not that hard it's just i think people forget about it you know you get your coffee you move on but that just keeps it nice and clean and then another thing which i think should be done every day is to back flush. This is called a blind porta filter. You sometimes find they'll give you with little home machines like this a little rubber insert that goes into your basket and you pop the basket, put the rubber insert into there. But you can also go out and buy these. And if it's a 58 mil standard, which is why I love this little Audi machine, you can just pop that straight in there. And what this does is create a bit of pressure to build up the water as it's putting, applying pressure in there so that when you release the pressure, when we stop the shot, it spurts it back up and it cleans the dispersion screen a bit. And you watch how many grinds I'll get out of there just from this shot. So you pop it in like you're making a normal coffee. You want to wait until you've achieved full pressure. So a lot of people try to do it too early. Now, some machines have really tight seals so sometimes if you get full pressure you can't actually unlock this we'll see yep i can that's fine you want to release the pressure look at how many grinds just came out of that so build the pressure again build it up do this a couple of times and then once you've done this a few times you can stop it release the pressure and see how many grinds there are in there and keep doing that until there's no grinds there. And it doesn't take long, this probably takes two minutes at the end of your day, so you make your four coffees your day, for your family or whatever, then do this. Until there's no more grinds coming out. And that should be done every day. Next cleaning technique does require a little bit more effort. So you're gonna have to get yourself some coffee cleaner. Now, you do sometimes get them with the machines, they give you little tablets, it's the same stuff except that it's a lot more expensive if you buy the tablet form. Something like this will cost you $10 and it will last you a lifetime. This is what a lot of home baristas forget to do and a lot of them don't even get these. So after the first couple of tablets, they don't ever bother cleaning it with chemical. But it's very easy. There's three parts to it. One is your back flushing tool, bit of chemical in there, run that through there, do your same back flushing technique that we showed in the previous section, except use the chemical to do this this time. And what this does is just shower it up with, it does sends all of the chemical up into behind the dispersion screen. It helps get rid of all of those oils. And you keep doing that until this is completely clean. Now part two 
is if you look closely, you can see that there's some staining happening on the stainless steel here. That just comes over time. It's nothing bad, but it does end up getting a bit rancid in your coffees. So what you wanna do is you wanna take your porter filter and pop it in a, a metal jug. If you have the milk jug that fits your porter filter, it can go nicely in there. Take a little bit of caffetto first, pop it just a, it doesn't have to be a lot, just enough to get a nice foamy taste. Fill it with some water a little bit and then start to mix it around till you start to see a lot of the foams building up there. Then pop your porter filter in and fill it with water till it's covering the metal part but doesn't go above the plastic part. This needs to be done, I would say, once every one or two weeks, depending on your usage, and depending on how oily your coffee is. Because if you're using dark roasted coffee, there's a lot more oils outside of the coffee, and it will go and saturate every aspect of your coffee machine with more of those oils that will turn rancid. Depending on your volume and the coffee that you use, this will determine how often you do it. You can just look at it and you can see it's caking up with oils, then do it more often. If you see it's looking pretty good like it has been there, maybe you can leave it an extra week. But this is something that's super important that I think a lot of home baristas forget to do, or can't be bothered to do. Now, another way to avoid this is to get yourself a naked porter filter. Because there's no base to it, the oils can't collect there and they can't stain it, and you're basically only having to worry about the basket, because all of those oils only touch the basket. So this is a really good way of eliminating that problem, the issue that you have with there. But these are expensive, so maybe it's not your bag. Still, it's a good idea to get one of these for many different reasons, but the, one of the most important things I think of is that you don't have to worry about the oils caking up on your porter filter. Hey, you might not know this, but we supply delicious tasting coffee beans all around the world. So if you're looking for some super high quality coffee that is beautifully tasting, perfectly designed for espresso, then jump on our website, coffeebeansdelivered.com.au. Here's a 12% discount off of all of our coffees shipped anywhere around the world. So jump online and order some now. Now, back to the main event. So I came back after a day, after soaking it, and look how beautifully clean this looks now. It's stunning. It's amazing how much it comes back looking like the new product. Definitely need to soak them. I'll show you one that I did here, which I leave specifically unsoaked so that you can see, because on the surface, it looks like it's not too bad. Like you've used it, it's old, looks okay. Until you take this basket off and you really see what's going on. There, that's what happens when you don't soak it. You imagine, it's not like the old days where you had the chef's frying pan where you would coat every single meal on top of it and you'd act like it was the flavors of all those meals coming through. We now know probably best to keep it nice and clean. Don't leave your porta filters looking like this. Now onto the final and probably most overlooked cleaning and maintenance job that you should do on your home espresso machine. So no point in cleaning any other part of your machine if the source of the water is dirty. So the dispersion screen, which is the screen that sits up inside your group head, is actually the most important and most overlooked part that you need to clean. Now, I'll show you how to do it. You can take a Phillips head screwdriver or a flat head screwdriver, depending on what you've got, you have to look up underneath. It might be an Allen key as well. Just take it off, it's very easy to undo. Simply unscrew that. You can do this on any machine pretty much. There's maybe one or two that have slightly different functions, but these ones are all the same. There we go. So this part here gets caked up with coffee underneath here all the time. In fact, I have one just from one day's usage in the cafe that I can show you to compare and show you how many oils get stuck in here. So to understand this, this is one that we used from just one day of service. So I've made probably a couple of hundred coffees on this uh, screen and look how dirty it is already. And that's just from one day. This dispersion screen should be cleaned if you're a home barista, I would say once a month, that should be at least what you're doing. And it doesn't take much, just take it off, give it a wipe, give it a clean. If you're doing your porta filter soaking at the same time, you can pop this in with the same chemicals that gives you and it brings it nicely back to polished chrome. So to understand what's going on and why it's important to clean this, you have to understand what's happening with the espresso when you're making it. So espresso means pressed, it doesn't mean express, 
it actually means pressed. You're pressing, you're using pressure to squeeze all of the oils out of those grinds. You're creating so much pressure, it's about nine times the Earth's atmosphere, that when you release that pressure, you've created a little bit of a vacuum in there, and so the coffee just goes frying back up through the dispersion screen up into the group head. So all of those oils that were sitting in the basket shoot up and they will sit around the edges here. So if you don't clean this, just you're going to end up with rancid, rancid coffee tastes and you don't want that. Now for those of you who have a flat head screw, if you've got a Phillips head you can't use this, but if you have a flat head, there's a thing called a screen driver. And this is it here, it's an amazing invention by Rhino and it has the flat head screw in there and it fits perfectly over your uh, screen so that you don't have to worry about getting the hot water on your hands and burning yourself and it nice and easily just screws around there you don't have to try and figure out where the hole is to get it right you can nice and easy fit it up inside there give it a couple of twists and pull your whole dispersion screen out so check out one of these these are fantastic they're very cheap and there'll be a link below that you can check out and buy this online so that's it for your maintenance please remember this is a massively overlooked important part of the entire coffee making process yes it's not fun yes you just want to drink your coffee after you've done it but if you do those daily routines those weekly routines and the monthly cleaning routines, you're gonna have beautiful tasting coffees all day, every day, for the rest of your entire machine life. So if you want more information, please jump on my website, coffeebeansdelivered.com.au. I sell the Cafetto cleaner there, so you can purchase some there. There's information there that goes into more detail about cleaning, and you can purchase those lovely coffee beans if you wanna get the whole package. Use the discount code below, and you can purchase what you need there. I'm Ride, your coffee coach. And as always, enjoy your brew.